everybody, it's Bridget from Kellogg Garden Products and we're back with Steven from La Costa Nursery here in Encinitas, California. And we're gonna talk about a topic that is a little more west coast. We're gonna talk about fruit trees. Um, I'm really excited about talking about these citrus fruit trees because he, Steven actually told me that I can grow them even though I don't have a really big yard. So we're gonna talk about that too. So tell me, is right now a good time for us to be doing fruit trees? On the west coast, we're pretty much year round in Southern California because of the temperature is so mild. Okay. And the climate is so Mediterranean that it never reaches freezing temperatures, which can be the one factor in certain citrus trees, particularly lemons and limes, that can um, make you not want to have them outside this time of the year. Can you do fruit trees in areas where it gets colder, where it gets down to freezing? It's borderline. Uh, some of the tangerines do okay. Okay. But lemons, limes, and other things kind of hit a uh, not such a good place okay. in the freezing. I'm sorry guys, I'm really sorry. We'll send you our fruit. So what trees can we actually plant, at, have in pots? I mean, can we do all of them in pots or are there special fruit trees that are good in pots? Well, yes. Uh, the semi-dwarf rootstock on a lot of the citrus is what people have been gearing towards in residential and container gardening because mm -hmm. it keeps the plant more compact and at a reasonable size where you can still get fruit production in a container or in a small space. So like this tree right behind you, by the way, it's, I mean, these are beautiful. Is this a dwarf one or does this one have to go in the, um, in the ground? All we really carry these days are the semi-dwarf because we get so many requests for them okay. and they still bear so much fruit that it's really just worth it to have them because a normal citrus tree can reach over 20 feet tall and then you can't get the fruit. And most people don't have that space in their, in their yard anyway. So the alternative is a semi-dwarf that usually max out at about eight to 10 feet and the ground fully mature and in a pot even more compact than that. And then if I decide that my patio is getting too full and I want to transplant uh, into the ground, even though I know it's a dwarf and it should be fine, is, is there any advice when I transplant to the ground? Just make sure you loosen up the root ball because depending how long it's been in that container, it's probably root bound and their roots really like to be free and spread when you get them into a new um, environment, especially one as large as like a soil would be okay and um, just water them in thoroughly and treat them as you were in the container only to a little bit of a larger extent i'm adding in my fertilizer i've got my soil in there the only time i have to worry about repotting it isn't about my soil it would then be about just growth right or do i need to change out the soil every so often the soil will settle over time so it's good over a long period of time to repot it if possible once they're in a large container though that tends to be a bit more like cumbersome and labor intensive so at that point really as long as you keep feeding it and putting fresh soil on the top that can settle down over time you can keep the plant looking healthy. One of the things that I've been told about um, citrus and some of the big fruit trees is that they're um, they need a lot of water right so is it when they're in the pot do they I mean is it better because now I've got a more compact area for the water or they just still need tons and tons of water? They're actually pretty Mediterranean type plants so they don't really need as much water uh, as people think they do they like to dry out between watering so um, I think that's a little bit of a common misconception with citrus. Oh, nice. and, um, but in certain soils, like clay for example, when you do water, it can hold the water so much longer, so you just have to be aware of your soil type. And in a container, you can create the ideal soil type that you want, so that makes it easier to plant. How would I know if I've got, I mean, do I just grab my soil and bring it to somebody like you, or are there ways that I can tell if I've got too much clay? Or there are ways sandy? that you can tell, but uh, the easiest way is usually to dig a small hole, maybe a foot down or so, and pour water in it enough to fill it up and watch it. If it drains relatively quickly, then you've got sandy soil or some type of sand mixture. And if it sits there for a while and drains really slowly, then you've either got compact soil or there's enough clay in there where it just doesn't drain fast. Huh. You know, that's a great tip. I never even thought about digging that hole and watching the water. And then, of course, I could always video it and then bring Steve in the video. So yes. tell me what's going on here in the soil. So that's good. So say I get this beautiful tree um, and I want to take it home. Now, you've already got it planted in soil, but I'm going to need my own soil. What are, what are good soils to use for these plants? Well, first of all, if you don't want to repot it anytime in the near future, you want to get a good size container for it. We usually recommend one and a half to two times the root ball volume that it's in now. So you could start with a smaller plant and work your way up and replant it over time or not. 
Um, but ideally, what I like to use personally for soil type, if we walk over here, mm -hmm. is I start with a good base soil with organic content, and I've been leaning towards the GNB Eden Valley potting soil, which uh, is coconut core based and still has all the nutrients, but also nice aeration and fluffiness, so it doesn't get compacted over time. And I like to mix that with the Kellogg's Palm Cactus and Citrus mix just to provide some additional drainage because in containers, um, drainage is very key and it's not as easy um, as putting gravel at the bottom that just isn't adequate enough to improve the drainage. So mixing it with the Eden Valley potting soil will give you that good medium. And I can never say enough good things about worm castings. So in my little formula, I do the Eden Valley potting soil, the Palm Cactus and Citrus, a good handful or two or more, depending on the size of the container of the earthworm castings. And then just to provide nutrients for the first few months, I like to mix in the Garden and Bloom organic fertilizer for citrus and fruit trees. The GNB is part of uh, Kellogg Garden products. We do also have the Kellogg Garden organic products um, and we have the potting soil. Um, we have uh, the fertilizers uh, and everything else. So if you can't get the GMB in your area, you can get the Kellogg Garden products in your area. So do you treat, say, like oranges, lemons, and limes? I'm doing the same thing with them, or is there something that oranges like, or lemons like, or like, how would I, let's say I've got a nice sunny area on my patio. Um, can I do all three? I'd say you're off to a good start. The sun is an important part okay. in determining where you put the citrus tree. Okay. And they like a majority of the day to be sunny, if not full sun. Okay. Okay. And That's then great. from there, you can pretty much grow whatever type you like, only knowing that oranges, tangerines, grapefruit, plants like that have a harvest season where they're ready. And lemons, limes usually have a, once they're established, almost year round fruiting cycle. Mm. So determining on what type of fruit you use and how often you want to harvest it will determine what type of tree you want. Very nice. Does one grow faster than the other? Oranges or limes or lemon? No. Things. Not really. No. They do have a growth season where they seem to push out all their new growth multiple times throughout the year after a certain period. Okay. Less so when they're bearing fruit, but um, yes. I see that you have a blood orange tree. I'm very excited about that. Anything special about the blood orange? The warmer, the sunnier the spots you can find for them, the deeper red the fruit becomes. So um, typically you want this to be in the sunniest, warmest location, especially to get that red pulp that you would enjoy on the blood orange. Um, and how long will it take me to get, um, like from this size tree, how long would, I, would it take before I get some That's a fruit? five gallon container and they should flower next spring. Um, okay. Some of them actually flower the year that we get them in from the growers, but typically I say you're gonna be waiting a year to two years to start getting a regular fruit production out of a plant like that, whereas a 15 gallon is usually in its fruit producing years to begin with. What are the fruit trees that we have over here? This is our tangerine section and they're typically a winter uh, ripening crop. So you'll see a lot of the cuties and the satsuma tangerines and things start to ripen in the winter. And those are the local ones. The other ones, if you're getting them at any other time of the year, are probably grown in South America. So okay. just be aware of that. And we have some gold nugget, which is just starting to hit the market in one of our most popular tangerines right now. Uh, has a bumpy skin, but a very large fruit. It's, it's seedless and uh, it tastes just wonderful. People always ask me what they are when I have a basket full of them at the local market. And these are some semi-dwarf kumquat trees, which can actually take, uh, if you were to choose one that didn't get full sun, I would say choose a kumquat tree because they can take partial shade and still bear a lot of fruit for you. Oh, awesome. I love that. I love it. Um, and this, these guys are already, I mean, so much fruit and they're so small. Yeah, and they produce more than one crop a year. So you do get uh, probably enough kumquats to last you however long you like. <laughs> That's nice. How big, um, when will I know that I can actually um, pick them? They're a nice deep orange color. Okay. Yes. Nice deep orange. And you just try them. So it's like trial and error with all citrus trees. Um, there's a long ripening season and you just have to try one early, try one mid, try one late and feel to be when the sweetest fruit is and what you like the best. Um, I see we have some oranges. What do we have right here? What is this? Is this also? Uh, this is an Oro Blanco grapefruit. It's a, a white fleshed grapefruit that does better on the coast. Uh, we also carry the ruby red, but those tend to do better a little more inland where there's some um, increased summer temperatures. Same with the blood orange, but they still do well coastally, but inland um, you get more of the coloration.
Oh, that's but cool. the Ora Blanca does great on the coast. And then this is a grapefruit too, is that? Um... This is the Ruby Red, yes, okay, grapefruit right here. So that's the one everybody seems to like, but I think as more people try the Ora Blanco, they find that it's just as sweet, if not sweeter. Is that lemon or limes that we have over there? The, there's both. There's uh, actually Eureka lemon and improved Myers lemon are both of the lemons over there in that section. And as you can see, they both have lots of fruit on them in the 15 gallons and they almost continually produce that in that size once they've reached that state. Oh, nice. Myers lemons are so good. Mm -hmm. What about the key lime lemons? Do those do um, well out yeah, here? Those are also known as the Mexican limes or the bartender's limes. Okay. And um, they do very well here, but they're one of the first ones that can uh, take damage from cold temperatures. But on the coast and where we are here, we're just fine. We don't really have to worry about that unless you're in a microclimate maybe where you get some frost. Okay. And also very productive in their fruit. We just posted about finger limes. Um, have you seen those? Oh yeah, we've carried them for a while. I think we were one of the first nurseries to introduce them, but they are not so relatively available from the growers just yet. So okay. they're kind of a rare commodity at this time. It's To me, it was almost like a lime with a caviar texture, but amazing taste. Oh, I can't wait. So we might be able to get them sometime later. We carry them throughout the year, but you have to check in because supplies are limited. Right. All right. Well, we're going to keep on the lookout because we did post about the caviar lime and people went crazy. They're like, yeah. how can I get it? It looks so cool. It does. It looks like caviar coming out. It's absolutely cool. Well, if you're in our area, you can call in and leave us your name and number and we can call you when we get some in. That way you get the first uh, availability on them. Otherwise, it's hard to say. Over here, what do we have? This is a great evergreen plant. If you like guava tasting fruit, it's called a strawberry guava. So you get these little guavas that taste just absolutely delicious. The one thing about guavas is they have the seeds in the middle. So yeah. you have to either eat them or uh, spit them out. But uh, it makes a great evergreen tree that produces a lot of fruit. Oh, that is awesome. How big will this tree get? These will usually reach about 15 feet tall. Excellent. And this one? These would be the edible passion fruit vines. Um, I've probably sold more this year than any other year. They make a great fence cover, very fast growing, vigorous, and they produce like crazy. So I know somebody who had one plant grow 30 feet and produce about 80 pounds of passion fruit by the third or fourth year that they had planted it. 80 pounds? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And you, oh wow, that is absolute, this would look beautiful. So it does need something to grow up against. Yes, but they do have the natural tendrils which will grab onto a nearby object okay. and attach itself. But it's better if you have something more structured so that you can control where it grows. Okay. So, and is it really invasive? Do you have to worry about it being like the I don't know about system? invasive, but I would call it a vigorous grower. So <laughs> you need the space or you need to be willing to trim it and maintain it to keep it within the space that you planted it. And then what about watering? Is this a heavy feeder or it needs a lot of water? It, I'd say moderate. It's not as heavy as citrus or avocado, but um, the leaves lighten this time of the year due to the cold uh, night temperatures that we have, as with a lot of kind of subtropical fruits. Okay. And then they just green right up and grow like crazy in the springtime. And then any bugs? Is it the same bugs that are, you know, the mites and all Passion that? Passion flowers, actually not as bad as the citrus trees with the bugs to maintain. But you always want to look out for mites in our climate because it's so dry and dusty a lot of the time. Okay. And aphids in the springtime. Aphids, those little aphids. And the worm castings actually helps deter them a bit. Okay. It makes the plant taste not as good to them. And for aphids too, um, we have done some posts about bringing in some of those bugs that like them. You can go and you can get um, some of the ladybugs and yeah. bring those in. The only thing you have to worry about is sometimes they leave you, okay? You bring them in and they just take off. Um, so there are some bugs sometimes that you can bring in that yeah. are more positive mm -hmm. for Green that. lace wings as well we sell, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you? Nice. Mm -hmm. I love that. Praying mantis are good for aphids, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Well, they're good for a lot of insect pests. The problem is if you're growing a lot of plants that have butterflies, be careful because they'll eat caterpillars as well. Bad ones and the ones that are butterflies. Ah, uh, so be careful with that. They are so cool looking. I love their little pods too. Those little, oh my gosh, yeah. those are really, really cool. I mean, citrus isn't easy, right? Is there any other advice that you have that will help me help me with this? I feel like as long as you've got the, the soil composition right in the mm -hmm. beginning and you keep up with the nutrient feeding properly and once you figure out the watering cycles based on where you are, 
that's really all there is to it other than the pest monitoring. Now, what are things to watch for as far as when do I know I'm going wrong? Like, can I um, leaf color or if exactly, or yes. browning or yellowing? So what do I need to what watch for? What we would for? call chlorotic foliage or lightning or yellowing foliage could be from over or under watering. So you just need to check and make sure that you uh, the plant isn't wet all the time and it's also not dry for a long period of time. It's okay to dry out between, but it also could mean um, a nutrient deficiency. So I like to fertilize citrus regularly, um, oranges or lemons and limes on a monthly basis and everything else on a bi-monthly basis, but they constantly need nutrients to look good and produce the fruit that you like. So a lot of times when people are using and you know, synthetic fertilizers, they don't have to keep applying because it kind of goes through. But with organics, you are. You're, you're going through and like you said, once a month or every couple weeks, depending on what you're working with, you have to bring that fertilizer. Yeah, that's why it's important to mix it in initially in the soil so that it's near the root ball already and as it starts to decompose and become ready to the plant roots, it's already there for it. And then as you apply on a monthly basis, it takes a period of time for that to actually be available to the plant. So the more often that you do that and are, do it on a regular basis, the more you can prevent nutrient deficiency. What pests should I be looking for with these guys? I know good bugs are good. Don't get me wrong, we love our bugs, right? But there are bugs that we don't like. So what bugs should I be there looking for? There are lots for? of bad ones for citrus, unfortunately, but the worm castings can really help deter them deter them. <laughs> Anything from scale to mites and the most current uh, bad ones around this part of the area are uh, leaf miner and the citrus uh, psyllid which is actually a quarantine pest in our area. It's pretty serious and not many people have it. They're keeping it under really good control for now but it's something to keep an eye on. So let's say I have mites. What can I do with the mites? Well you can use an organic pest control product like uh, horticultural oil or neem oil to okay. smother them and it also uh, if you can during dry dusty periods rinse the leaves off periodically they don't like that they like dry dusty conditions okay. so rinsing the leaves off of your plant every now and then during dry periods can prevent them. Now, with some plants like if we're doing some of the veggies and things like that you can do companion planting um, that might deter some of them. Are there any companions that go well with citrus to deter any of them or no? Nah, not so much. Uh, okay. I typically like to be bring pollinator plants near citrus even though bees are very attracted to their fragrant flowers in the spring. I like to use you know African blue basil or lavender and rosemary, other Mediterranean plants nearby to just ensure that the bees are coming to your plants because that's the only way you're going to get fruit is if the bees pollinate your flowers. Uh, we need those pollinators yes, so we, we did talk about natives and it's good to have those flowering plants there. All right, well, thank you again, Stephen. You are awesome. I love all the information. Um, so if you are in the local area, you can give them a call. Also, leave your comments um, on the video, and then we'll come back and we'll ask them uh, either do a blog post or just come in and answer your questions. We'll come back to Stephen. I appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks so much. Thank you.